Yng Nghymru, mae gennym gynlluniau uchel geisiol i greu coedwig genedlaethol a fydd yn rhedeg ar ledled o wlad trwy ecosystem gysylltiedig o goetiroedd hynafol a rhai newydd. Bydd y goedwig genedlaethol i Gymru yn perthyn i bob un ohonom ac o fydd un i gyd. Ein un ni fydd hi w chreu, ein un ni fydd hi w meithryn, ein un ni fydd hi w choleddu am flynyddoedd i ddod. Bydd yn amddiffyn ein gwlad ac yn rhoi ffordd fwy cynaliadwy o fyw a gyfer cenedlaethau'r dyfodol. Dyma'ch coedwig genedlaethol, byddwch yn rhan ohono. In Wales, we have ambitious plans to create a national forest which will run the length and breadth of the country through a connected ecosystem of ancient and new woodlands. The National Forest for Wales will belong to and benefit us all. It will be ours to create. It will be ours to cultivate. It will be ours to cherish for years to come. It will protect our country and provide a more sustainable way of life for our future generations. This is your National Forest. Be part of it. Jamai, Boradach here has the music fades into the background. Boradach here, Chris O'Mara, he gives us our giver our eye of the road. He drawed Koydui, Gerlethol, Igamria, Kagliwed, Savbuinche, Christiane, Achesia, Chi. Good morning to you all. My name is Chris, Chris Jones, and a very windy morning. Welcome to the second day and the third session, of course, of this special event on the National Forest of Wales and to hear your views and your opinions and voices. This is the third, I think, yeah, the third of six sessions that we've been running yesterday and doing so today, of course, and tomorrow. And from the registration details, again, I can see we have a yeah wide range of people from all fields in this virtual webinar room. And you can see, of course, I'm going to rest here. Of course, we're going to go to the bar and we're going to go to the bar and we're going to go to the bar. So as Che once sang, I think, what's it all about? Well, I'm sure that most of you are aware by now that the, the First Minister, Mark Drakeford, announced his attention to develop a national forest for Wales in his manifesto commitments in 2018. And 12th of March last year, 2020, of course, the First Minister officially launched the National Forest Programme. So let's have our keynote address for this morning, if we may. Neges ar benig iawn gan lywodraeth Cymru, fel rhyw fath o groeso i'r sesiwn fwreol yma. Please welcome a pre-recorded message from the Director of Environment and Marine at Welsh Government, the wonderfully named Jan Marco Curado. Bwrda pawb a chroeso. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to our National Forest event. I'm really pleased to uh, to open today's, today's session, and I'm really looking forward to hearing uh, your views and your and your thoughts. And first of all, I'd like to thank you all uh, for attending uh, this session. Uh, some of you will have been here for the whole three days, some of you only for one session, but it's really encouraging to see how many people uh, are interested in uh, in this National Forest Project. As you know, tackling the climate emergency and restoring biodiversity um, are key priorities for, for the Welsh Government and the National Forest Project is at, is at the heart of these of these efforts. And the last year has, has shown all of us how important uh, nature is to our mental and, and physical well-being. Now, the National Forest is an ambitious long-term programme, creating networks of woodland across Wales, uh, helping to capture and store carbon, provide a timber resource and providing spaces for nature and leisure for all of us uh, to enjoy. And we've made some amazing progress in this uh, in this first year to kickstart the program, uh, including a number of projects you'll hear about you'll hear about today, which have helped us to test uh, new ways of working uh, and funding mechanisms. There will also be some exciting opportunities coming up over the next year. Uh, the First Minister announced yesterday a new project to award national forest status to exemplar woodlands across Wales and create some, some new ones. The intention is to launch this scheme uh, early in the summer, uh, and therefore I would urge all of you to uh, uh, to think about uh, whether your woodland could already be a national forest exemplar or could uh, potentially following some improvements meet those those criteria more details will follow uh, on the scheme in in due course as i said i very much look forward to hearing uh, all the views uh, that you have uh, the discussions that are going to happen uh, today uh, and over the course of the event 
um, and we will obviously uh, listen very attentively and feed all of that into our thinking on developing this project. Diolchan Bauer. Yeah, Diolchan Bauer, Mr. Corrado. Um, now, we are eager, keen that you tweet as much as possible if you are on Twitter and the social media. There's a hashtag in Welsh and in English. Uh, in English, it's hashtag National Forest Wales. And in Gymraeg, it goes hashtag Coedwig Genedlaethol Cymru. So please feel free to tweet um, at any time and put some photographs and comments and etc. etc. Diolch mor iawn i chi. Felly, beth sydd o'n blaen eni? What's in store? Well, the aim of the event is twofold. To focus on the views of the people of Wales, that's, that's you, on the development of the National Forest, of course. Uh, so whilst exploring the benefits of woodlands and trees for all, demonstrating how valuable trees actually are, of course, from a social, economic and environmental perspective. And so over the course of the three days, we've got these themed sessions lined up, focusing on these benefits. And, and funnily enough, as I've been saying yesterday, they actually called trees and communities, trees in the economy, which is what we're focusing on this morning, and trees for the environment. Now, with a dive thema and calidad pari, though we are in the earth, and the earth is very good, 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 and the earth is very good. All three themes will be delivered twice during the course of the event and at different times to enable as many as possible to have access to them. In addition to these sessions, there was an informal networking workshop yesterday afternoon run by our colleague Glenda Jones, so thank you if you attended that. Now, for each of these sessions, and as I keep saying, please bear with me here, there are three parts. Part one, Hanin, which is where we are now, of course, an information sharing session with updates on Welsh government policy and showcase item, which we'll be using this Zoom webinar link for his session Rhani Gwybodeth, Rhani Newyddion, Diwadara, Ynglyn, our project. Rhandai part two will be a discussion session and we'll be accessing that through a Zoom meeting link that you'll all receive in the breakout conversation room as part of event box for his session Drabo. Don't panic yet, I'll explain about in a second about event box. Uh, Rhan three, we're in part three, a panel Q&A. Now we had a very, well, a fantastic panel uh, session yesterday morning and the evening, quite an intense one uh, last night. I'll be facilitating that when we reconvene here in the webinar in the main event box room. I'm hoping that you'll have some questions. I'm actually seeing some questions coming in already uh, for the panels and uh, please use the Q&A facility here on Zoom as much as you can. I'm sure most of you by now at least are familiar with Zoom. Felly sesiwn holi ag ateb bydd y drydedd rhan. Ac wrthgwrs, mae yna wybodaeth am yn siaradwyr ni ddeall biographies of the contributors and synopsis of their various sessions in the showcase rooms. There's also a room about the networking session and a Q&A room, Q&A room where you can find biographies, of course, of your panellists. So please feel free to browse these rooms um, at your leisure. The main room here is being recorded, as well as the Q&A session later on this morning, but the breakout discussion groups won't be recorded for you to be aware of that. So, Eventbox, yeah, it's a superb platform and it's uh, very easy to navigate. However, you might need support regarding something or you might get stuck somewhere. Please don't panic, don't, don't be embarrassed, don't delay. Go to the lobby of Eventbox. If in doubt, always go back to the lobby, the word lobby of Eventbox. And if you do have any problems and really can't get any help, you can email info at eventbox.wales and eventbox of course is b-o-c-s so as info at eventbox.wales adam uh, is our resident technical expert and i'm sure he'll help you if he possibly can rate now kimo here then you run door are three projects in your hoi sunny or vath or white team in line are hino breed soon we'll have today's three showcases for you and they'll illustrate work that's currently happening but firstly and give Let's turn to Welsh Government and a member of the National Forest Team to give us an overview of development so far. The hero Croesos Colochna, please welcome the Head of National Forest Policy, live, James Byatt. Okay, good morning everyone, Boradar. So yes, I'm James Byatt, I work in the National Forest Programme in uh, Welsh Government. So I'm going to use this next few minutes just to give you an introduction to the background to the National Forest and then the overview of the next steps. I'm going to keep it fairly short because 
if any of you attended yesterday's sessions, you'll have heard this already, but I think it's worth just running through quickly for the benefit of those that weren't around yesterday or didn't attend any of the sessions yesterday. So I'm gonna do that now. So could I have next slide, please? So as Chris has already mentioned, the idea of National Forest was first announced by the, the First Minister in his manifesto commitments in 2018. Since then, we've launched the National Forest Programme on the 12th, 12th of March, 2020. So just a day short of a year ago. So a lot happened in that time since then. And we've been saying that we want the National Forest to extend the length and breadth of Wales. And by planting trees, looking after the trees we've got, it's gonna to contribute to many, many benefits across Wales, ranging from helping us to tackle the climate change emergency, supporting biodiversity across Wales, the people of Wales that use the forest can obviously improve their health and well-being and can support commercial activities, business activities, tourism, etc. So there's lots of benefits from a national forest. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay. So what is the national forest? We're sort of taking a sort of four-step four approach to it, really. So we've got, local, we've got the local element of it, really thinking about woodlands that are for people, nature, and commercial opportunities. We've been quite clear that we want it to encompass both new, new woodland planting, but also make the most of the woodlands that we've already got in Wales. And it'll be woodlands in urban and rural areas, make in both commercial, sorry, both public and private ownership. So really encompassing all the woodlands across Wales that can meet the outcomes that we're looking to achieve from the National Forest, which I'll come on to in a minute, which again takes them on to the region approach. So again, we want the, as I said, we want the National Forest to be spread across Wales. And so rather than taking a geographic approach, rather than saying, the National Forest is going to be in a part of Mid Wales, North Wales or South Wales or all three. We're going to give everybody the opportunity to have a bit of National Forest close to where they, close to where they live. And we sort of see the National Forest as sort of a, on a national scale as sort of an umbrella catalyst for woodland creation. It's getting people to talk about woodland creation. It potentially, you know, if, if the woodlands that are created are managed across Wales can meet the outcomes looking forward from the National Forest, then they potentially be, become part of that wider brand. But we wouldn't necessarily expect everybody to have their woodlands branded national forest. It's an option that they can choose. And we want to make sure that woodlands provide lots of benefits for lots of people. So they're going to, we're going to be focused on sort of multi-purpose woodlands that can produce multiple benefits. And something that is a bit of a, it's an asset for Wales, sort of akin to the, sort of think of it along the lines of the sort of Wales coastal path, which we're going to come back to again in a minute. But again, it's sort of a global, we're thinking of it again as a global brand things to bring people into Wales, tourism opportunities and destination, and really playing our part to sort of tackle climate change across the world. So have next slide, please. So as, as, as people is a real, really key theme for the National Forest. We want to engage people as much as we can in the idea of trees and woodlands, et cetera. So we've recently been working in collaboration with the National Museum of Wales, National Library of Wales, and the Royal Commission for Ancient and Historic Monuments and we've developed a people's collection for the National Forest. It's a digital platform, a digital time capsule for bringing together everyone's experiences of woodlands in Wales. It's an archive for everyone's experiences. So we want people to put forward their memories of woodlands from when they're children or adults, pictures, films, poetry. It sort of sit, sort of see, we'll see it grow as the National Forest grows as well as sits alongside the National Forest. If you click on the link and provide your input, you'll also see that the First Minister has already contributed his ideas for, the, for well, his experiences of trees from when he was younger as well. So there's some lovely stuff on there already at the moment, but we want to see that grow in time. So please feel free to put forward your ideas and memories, et cetera, to, to that, sort of that site. Can I have the next slide, please? So I've mentioned it already that we're, we're talking about taking an outcomes-based approach to the National Forest. We've been working with people, stakeholders over the past year to come up with these high-level outcomes. They're, they're still work in progress. We still need to develop the, the detail below them, but broadly, I'll just run through the six outcomes, give you a little bit of background. The first one is around good quality, well-designed and managed resilient woodlands. We obviously want lots more good quality woodlands across Wales if we're going to meet the climate change emergency, support biodiversity and have those woodlands that people can use across Wales. Refer to resilience because obviously we want the woodlands that we create and manage to stand the test of time, particularly in light of climate change and stressing the need for the right tree in the right place. We want the woodlands to be accessible to people. There's a wide range of benefits to people from being able to access woodlands, from their health and well-being, supporting community development, employment and learning opportunities, for example. We want community involvement in woodlands. So ideally, we'd like people to have more of a say in the woodlands that are in their local communities. But ideally that then goes on to more of an ongoing relationship. It won't be the place 
place everywhere, but there's an ongoing relationship where people might be able to help manage the woodlands. There may be opportunities for schools to get involved in the woodlands, that sort of thing. Uh, connected woodlands. So really thinking about this from a sort of biodiversity nature point of view, making sure that as woodlands are created, we th people think about how they connect to the woodlands around them. And it won't always be feasible, but at least take that into consideration, particularly as Wales becomes more wooded nation, but also thinking about it from a sort of people perspective as well. So getting that connection for people to woodlands, you know, emotional connectivity, but also physical connectivity, things like cycle paths, you know, footpaths between woodlands, that kind of thing. So Next one is dynamic multi-purpose woodlands and trees. So really keen that the woodlands we create and enhance as part of national forests and maximize the benefits that can be delivered through multi-purpose woodlands. So thinking around woodlands that are for leisure and tourism, but also potentially small scale local enterprises such as firewood, sawmills, woodcrafts, carving and tannery, extending all the way up to maybe large scale commercial timber harvesting businesses, supply more homegrown timber to our industries, for example as well as always keeping in mind the sort of biodiversity elements as well. And then the last one, woodlands that demonstrate learning, research and innovation. Obviously there's a lot of good work going on already across the UK and outside the UK in terms of woodlands, but building on that and using the, wood, the National Forest as a way of sort of showcasing what we can do with woodlands for the people of Wales. So next slide, please. So hopefully many of you have seen using the uh, outcomes I've just run through to guide us, uh, Minister for, for Environment announced the first 14 national forest sites in November last year, Climate Week last, last year. So these are really great woodlands already on the Welsh Government Woodland Estate, well managed by Natural Resources Wales, a range of different ex examples of woodlands, multi a lot of them are multi-purpose in better fit both people and nature and visitors to Wales. This is the first step and we're really, as some of you, if you were around yesterday or heard John, Mar John Marco earlier, we're going to launch a project later this year, which will give people an opportunity to come forward to have their woodlands branded national forest if they think they meet the outcomes of the national forest. For those that fall just short, again, as John Marco mentioned, we're going to launch a scheme later in the year, which will give people the opportunity to, to apply for funding to bring their woodlands up to a national forest standard, as well as creating new woodlands as well that potentially could be national forest in the future. So this is the first step, big step, but we want to really grow the national forest over the years to come. So next slide, please. So a lot of questions, a lot of people say, what is the national forest? Where is the national forest? It's not a question we can answer at the moment. This is going to be a long-term program of work, potentially 20, 30 years and beyond. But just to try and get an idea, and this was, this was, there was a session last night for those that you attended where Erica ran through a longer presentation on these. So I'm only gonna say a brief few words about these, but we've come up with three sort of what we're calling spatial strategy approaches. We'll probably need to come up with a different name, but for now it was, we're calling spatial strategy. The first one, as you can see on the screen at the moment, I think this is largely where the idea started off is that the yeah, National Forest was, idea, was originally gonna be a sort of a, a simple sort of path, as I say, akin to the national, into the coastal path, running from north to south or south to north, picking up sort of the exemplar sites that we've announced and picking up ancient woodlands. So a fairly simple path across Wales. Can I have the next slide, please? But as our sort of thinking's developed, we're really keen to, to with, the, with the path, we kind of we could end up excluding parts of Wales. So to try and bring everybody on board, another option. And these are, I should say, these are all, these are all ideas and they're for discussion. So they may come up in the breakouts later, but there was, it was for discussion last night but a more sort of circuit circuit approach, circular route around Wales, trying to bring in more of the ancient woodlands and more of the exemplar sites that will come forward in time. And then the third option, can I have the next slide, please? And the third option, which we sort of call in the hub and spoke approach, again, sort of taking account of things like area statements and local nature partnership plans and region approaches, we'd sort of have sort of hubs sort of focusing on sort of exemplar woodlands, ancient woodlands that we've got at the moment, which will grow in, the number of pubs will grow in time. And then we'll think about how we connect those to other woodlands across Wales, bringing in all the different parts. And I should say the last slide I didn't mention, but that sort of brought in things like um, the sort of the marine environment as well. So we could potentially connect them sort of the marine areas as well as part of this work. So there's just some ideas. They're complete, then there's nothing set in stone. They're just for, for discussion purposes. And there'll be opportunities to sort of feed in ideas as, as later in the year because at the moment we're doing this consultation with people like yourselves get ideas and then we want to build that into a consultation a more formal consultation that will take place later this year so there'll be opportunity to sort of think through these more at that at that point in time there'll be further opportunities to engage with yourselves as we go through the year as we build up to that consultation 
Um, other next steps, as I said, we've got the people's collection. So again, please feed in your thoughts about woodlands, photos, stories, etc. into that. There's still the Community Woodlands National Lottery Heritage Fund scheme running at the moment. That runs until March 2022. So if anybody's keen to create some community woodlands, there is still a funding available through the National Lottery Heritage Fund. And also, as I touched on, we, uh, the First Minister announced a new scheme yesterday that will launch probably early summer, which will give people opportunity to have their woodlands branded National Forest, but also if, apply for funding to bring other woodlands up to National Forest standard and create new woodlands. So I think that's it for me. Thank you for listening. Good, thank you, James. Uh, okay, don't forget to tweet. Please use the uh, National Forest Wales hashtag or Coidwig Gemblethol Cymrithgus and the Gymraeg. Two brief things. Somebody's asked if the Q&As yesterday will be available. Yes, they will, but we're not quite sure when yet because it takes a bit of time to, to upload them. So please be, uh, be patient with us. They will be available. Um, sometime soon in the next few days, probably after the weekend, because by the time we come to Friday, it might take a bit of time to load them up as well. And we are getting some superb questions already. Uh, yeah, we have. And uh, I'm going to keep those for later on, obviously, for the Q&A. And obviously, and also um, chat is being used as well. Um, for example, Kelly, Kelly O'Brien uh, is uh, telling us about a great example of Hill Holt Woods. I'm sure I think I've got that. Hill Holt Woods in Lancashire as well. So, OK, good. As I said, we'd like um, to ask our three special guests uh, today to present their individual showcases. They're here in Gunta. First, we have Gail Merriman. Now, Gail is Head of Green Recovery at Welsh Government. She's worked in the private, public and third sector and is currently, I think, Gail, studying for an MSc Forestry through Bangor University. So, Gail, over to you. Well, Borada, good morning. Um, thank you for this invitation to speak today. Um, as you said, my name is Gail Merriman and I'm the Head of Green Recovery in the Resource Efficiency and Circular Economy Division of Welsh Government. So um, could I have the second slide, please? So, um, we've learned lessons from the coronavirus pandemic. We've seen what's possible. The ability to work from home, uh, the decrease in traffic, the boost to nature, reduction in emissions and a changing picture in air quality. We've seen how important it is for Wales to be resilient and that our supply chains are complex and vulnerable. Next slide, please. The pandemic impacts were unprecedented, but we have to be ready for impacts that we don't initiate or control. And public perceptions are changing. There's an increasing awareness of how important resources are, adding to the growing recognition of the impacts on nature, health and well-being. Next slide, please. For the recovery from the coronavirus pandemic to be green, it has to address the overarching environmental challenges of the climate emergency by decarbonising and increasing resilience to the impacts of climate change the decline in biodiversity by reversing the decline in Wales and reducing our impact on biodiversity outside of Wales and unsustainable production and consumption by improving resource efficiency, sustainably using our natural resources and moving towards a more circular economy. In other words, the green recovery needs to drive progress so that pollution and emissions are reduced, biodiversity is increased and our use of materials becomes more efficient and responsible. Next slide, please. A green recovery from the coronavirus pandemic isn't just about the environment. Taking action also offers the opportunity to improve both economic and social outcomes whilst increasing Wales's resilience. The transition to this approach has already started, but now we need to accelerate this. Shorter supply chains and realising the value in our resources are as key to our recovery from the pandemic and mitigating the negative impacts of Brexit as are our actions to decarbonise and to reduce waste. Next slide, please. And the next one again. So on the 2nd of March, the Minister for Environment, Energy and Rural Affairs published Beyond Recycling, a strategy to make the circular economy in Wales a reality. So a circular economy is one that keeps resources and materials in use for as long as possible and avoids all waste. 
And this means moving away from a linear economy, a linear economy referring to the traditional industrial model that follows a take, make, waste process based on the extraction of resources, production of goods and services, and the disposal of post-consumer waste. Moving to a circular economy is key to delivery of environmental outcomes because it can significantly reduce our carbon emissions and our over-exploitation of natural resources and help to reverse the decline in biodiversity. But crucially, it can also improve economic and social outcomes. Economically, by taking a circular approach, which shortens supply chains, we can improve efficiency, create employment and increase, increase competitiveness. As reflected in the wellbeing goals, resource efficiency is crucial in order to help achieve a wellbeing economy and can make a contribution to government action to prioritise the foundational economy and drive regional economic development to create and sustain jobs and support work to achieve a more equal Wales, as well as reducing emissions. By re-evaluating what we need and how we use it, we can boost the long-term competitiveness of Wales in a global economy. In the context of the UK operating outside of the European Union, improved supply chain resilience will be even more important and can enhance Wales' ability to compete on a high quality rather than a low cost basis. In terms of social benefits, shortening supply chains and reducing emissions will reduce the health impacts caused by pollution and help to more fairly distribute resources. This will also provide more opportunities for communities to come together and to share resources to revitalise where we live. So to provoke a meaningful green recovery, we need a step change in approach from seeing green options as choices to embedding them as core requirements. For instance, by specifying low embedded carbon and recycled content in all the goods we purchase or the buildings that we construct. It means designing interventions from the outset to maximize their green contribution. A green recovery is not just about putting green in a box or prioritizing it over other objectives. It's about designing solutions that address green issues while bringing about positive social and economic change. Next slide, please. The green recovery is a challenge and an opportunity shared across the Welsh Government, and it builds on work already underway. It's integral to a number of plans and strategies published recently. The Future Wales National Plan 2040 sets out that nature-based solutions and the circular economy are critical to our future development. And on the 23rd of February, the Minister for Economy, Transport and North Wales launched the Economic Resilience and Reconstruction Mission, which sets out a vision for a greener economy, which demands high levels of circularity where resources are kept in use, adding economic value where waste is avoided creating jobs and skills opportunities in new industries from renewables to repair. So to realize the potential of the green recovery, as with realizing the vision of the national forest, we need to work together to achieve a coordinated approach to delivery. Events like this one remind us of the importance of collaboration, of working together to overcome barriers and maximize opportunities, to pilot, to innovate, to offer our experience to achieve our shared goals for a green, prosperous and resilient Wales for the well-being of current and future generations. Diolch thank you. Diolch Gael, Diolch iawn. Okay, and I think we'll see you at the, uh, the panel Q&A later on this morning, aren't we? And as I alluded to earlier on, there is information about all our speakers, of course, and presenters on the event box lobby page. And again, the Q&A sessions, as I said, somebody else has asked when they'll be available. They will be available, so just please bear with us. They will be available in the next few days. If I do get the answer today, I'll let you know. Okay, right, Nessa, well, we've, we've got a triple act, I think. Uh, we have Simon Inkson, the Project Lead Council Housing Building at Scale and Pace. Anthony Geddes, the National Manager in Wales of Confort. And Gary Newman, the Chief Executive of Wood Knowledge Wales, which is a for public good member organization focused upon the transformation of Wales into a high value forest nation. So over to the three amigos, are we gonna start with Simon? Simon, you're first. And good morning uh, from a bright and breezy Swansea. Um, I've got five minutes to speak to you today about why productive commercial forestry has an essential role to play in the national forest as a means of supporting the construction sector to transform to a low carbon resource efficient future. Next slide, please. 
This slide contains the only two graphics I'll use in my presentation. And on the left, we see CO2 emissions across the globe between 1750 and 2017. And you can note the exponential growth since the end of the Second World War. On the right, we have global temperature between 1850 and 2019. And this shows the growth of temperature, temperatures across the globe over recent years. These graphs demonstrate starkly the need to change and the need to change how we build and what we build with. We all recognise that we have to take action to reduce CO2 emissions. The Welsh Government itself declared a climate and biodiversity emergency in 2019 and prior to that set targets in relation to the reduction of CO2 emissions. Construction and the built environment is responsible for significant amounts of CO2 emissions. The construction of new buildings accounts for approximately 10% of UK CO2 emissions. Our construction methods haven't changed much over the last 100 years, and we tend to use carbon intensive materials in the structures we build. A staggering fact is that 50% of a new home's CO2 emissions are accounted for before the first occupier sets foot in it. So we need to move to construction techniques which reduce our CO2 emissions and we need to make that move urgently. That means we need to change our choices in terms of what we build and the materials we choose to build with. Can we have the next slide please? Timber has been described as the wonder construction material of the 21st century for a number of reasons. First, trees suck CO2 out of the atmosphere as they grow. Second, timber used in construction contains extremely low levels of embodied carbon compared to other materials, particularly steel and concrete. Third, timber in used in construction locks up the biogenic carbon contained within the timber and stores it for the lifetime of the building. Every tonne of kiln dried timber locks up approximately half a tonne of biogenic carbon. Can we move to the next slide, please? Fourth, Timber and timber byproducts lend themselves to reuse at the end of a building's useful life. Fifthly, engineered timber products such as cross laminated timber, laminated veneer lumber, and glue lamb are incredibly strong and can act as a suitable replacement for steel and concrete in construction. And I guess of critical importance is that by using more timber in construction, we create a market for greater levels of tree planting, and therefore we have the virtuous circle we suck out more CO2 from the atmosphere. Next slide, please. In Welsh Government, we've used our powers to, to further this agenda in the housing sector. The Innovative Housing Programme, which has run for a number of years, was set out to test new approaches to house building. And over recent years, has seen somewhere in the region of 1,900 homes developed over 64 schemes. 85% of those schemes use timber as the main structural component and just under 50% utilise Welsh-grown timber as part of the structure. And part of our challenge will be to transform the timber supply chain to reduce our reliance on imported timber in construction. In addition, it's inevitable that over the next decade, building regulations will have to change to address the levels of carbon associated with construction of new homes and buildings. But in the meantime, we are moving forward in, in this respect in relation to how new social rented homes are developed. The soon to be published guidance for social landlords on the quality standards for new social rented homes will encourage them to measure and reduce levels of carbon associated with new homes and stresses the importance of reusing materials. We will then use the grant regime which funds the development of new affordable housing to take this a stage further first requiring social landlords to undertake lifetime carbon assessments of the homes that they develop and ensure that they're doing everything they can to reduce embodied carbon and then to introduce limits on the carbon associated with the homes that they develop. These measures will drive social landlords to using materials with low levels of embodied carbon, i.e. timber. Next slide please. And finally, we're working with the 11 councils who still have a housing stock and a number of housing associations to design and develop a warrantied system for the delivery of a, a net zero carbon housing solution. We think that the way forward is going to be a timber frame solution which utilizes wood products as insulating materials. We hope that this product 
project, sorry, when advertised will be won by a consortium of Wales-based designers and timber frame manufacturers, boosting jobs in the green recovery. Next slide, please. To conclude, if we are to see a transformation in the construction sector to address the challenge of climate change, it's essential that we have access to a supply of locally grown timber and wood products. This creates jobs in our economy and reduces reliance on imported timber. Therefore, it's essential that commercial forestry is a key component of the national forest, supporting the creation of jobs in a range of roles across the timber and construction supply chains and underpinning the next generation of environmentally friendly buildings. So many thanks for listening. I'll now hand over to Anthony. Thank you very much for that, Simon. Um, good morning and thanks for inviting me to speak. Um, I'm Anthony Geddes, the National Manage for, Manager for Comfort in Wales. I'm a, a lover of trees, an investment manager by training, but a forestry advocate by vocation. Comfort is a, uh, a sawmill, a seed to sawmill organisation whose focus is around supporting uh, the forestry and timber sector. Um, this today really means sustainability in production, consumption and distribution of timber and fibre resources. When people think about the forests, it's not often their first thoughts are of timber harvesting, of turning trees into other products. No matter the fact they may be sat in a house, constructed of several tons of timber, sat on a chair, made of wood, writing notes on paper. It just isn't always a link that people make. Timber really is the backbone of the unseen product. The Welsh commercial timber harvest produces approximately 1.6 million metres cubed of sustainably managed softwood each year. That's then converted into sawn timber for construction, panel board for kitchens and flooring, pallets for transportation, fencing for houses and farms, animal bedding, firewood, paper, toilet roll. Hopefully these presentations today will provide a brief review of the social demands that are placed on productive forestry and the economic impact and the potential for Wales as a forest nation. Next slide, please doesn't appear to have come out quite as I hoped it would. Where do we take the conversation about woodland expansion? Uh, the land use change debate continues to be conflicted. Tree planting has been identified as a highly desirable action in government policy to combat climate change. Most land is owned and controlled by farmers or managed by other land users, and they rely on it for their livelihood. So it's not as simple as just saying plant more trees. You'll have heard the right tree in the right place. This is still a bit of a subjective question. The conversation is now really substantially more nuanced and the key to making the right choices is understanding what the landowners and other stakeholder, stakeholder objectives are. This session is titled economics. It's fine for me to say that forestry creates over 600 million pounds gross value added for Wales each year. But I think for most people, that's a meaningless number. So as Simon mentions, Maybe it's better to present this in thinking of thousands of houses or uh, other products that we can uh, that we can associate it with. For me, I think it's more about returning to simple economic principles. Over the next few decades, global tim timber demand is expected to triple, and the simple fact is that Welsh production and management is going to deliver a dip in timber supply from about 2030. But looking at this further, the National Forest Programme is an ambitious programme. And where possible, shouldn't we take the opportunity to make it self-supporting? There is value in forestry. If COVID has shown us anything, it's just how strong and dependable the timber market is. UK timber prices have increased nearly a third in 12 months. If anything, this should show us that we need to invest in this resource. We need to invest in technology, skills and appropriate policy. The National Forest has many potential roles and certainly my members are very clear but one of those should be that making sure productive timber is as an important a voice in Wales alongside carbon habitat biodiversity. I also believe the National Forest has a significant role to just play in public awareness of forestry and forestry skills or as I prefer to say jobs. Next slide, slide please. For me, this really is the next part of the puzzle. We talk about integrated land use. What we're desperate for is integrated education and skills. For green recovery, we need green jobs. 
But forestry isn't just lumberjacks and lumberjills. Stereotypically, the image of checked shirts and beards has even become a fashionable look. But the reality is, alongside that 600 million pounds each year, there are over 11,000 jobs in Wales, and this is going to be a growth sector. These jobs range from unskilled to highly skilled and scientific, and they're based in everywhere, from forests, sawmills, factories, offices, government departments, as we've seen today. For context, a mid-career forester can take home a very similar wage to a teacher, but without all the marking or spending all of your time stuck in a classroom, you get to be outside. For those looking to work in forestry and surrounding industry, there's support in the form of apprenticeships, graduate training schemes, and in-career funding for development. What's more, these skills and these careers have real value. They're helping to change. No, in fact, they're helping to save our world by working with these little plants and the super material that they produce. Out of this, for all other jobs based around timber, from carpentry to government lobby lobbyist, and you get to see the diversity of our industry. Maybe we need to start being more vocal that forestry careers exist, about what we do and why it's more than just a job. Perhaps some of that enthusiasm will draw in the next recruits and mid-career changes that we need to achieve the green recovery. Next slide, please. I'm going to wrap up today by just saying, finally, for those who would like to see what productive forests can produce and sustain beyond the headline financial outputs, please go to our Comfort website and download a copy of the Biodiversity Report. Economics in forestry is changing. It's no longer about plant a tree, grow a tree, harvest a tree, and turn a tree into a thousand different products. It's about that process that supports the environment and the habitats, the local communities, and even goes as far as boosting mental health. This year has been bleak. COVID has been a difficult struggle, but where better to start a green recovery than in the forest? Thank you for your time, and I'm going to hand over to Gary. So thank you, Anthony. Um, Borodar, good morning. Uh, I'm Gary Newman. I run Wood Knowledge Wales, which, as you heard, is an independent for public good membership alliance. Our members cover everything from uh, house builders and designers to forest owners and managers. Our purpose is to support the transformation of Wales into a high value forest nation. In this presentation, I aim to explain why I believe that would be a fantastic thing for Wales to become. Next slide, please. Uh, oh, this is, yeah, sorry, sorry, can we go back a slide? So um, most people will be aware that protecting old forests and creating new forests is one of the solutions to the climate emergency. Trees suck carbon from the atmosphere and turn this carbon into solid wood. In fact, trees are the only carbon capture and storage technology that we have globally that currently works. Next slide, please. But what most people don't fully understand is that using timber in construction stores that carbon for the life of the building, creating an additional carbon store whilst making space for new trees to continue to remove carbon from the atmosphere. Next slide, please. So expanding forestry and using more timber in construction are both key greenhouse gas removal mechanisms recognized by policymakers across the world. Welsh Government is now getting going on forestry with a fantastic National Forest Initiative and increasing the grant levels for tree planting on farmland. And we're yet to see substantial policy initiatives for the use of timber in construction. But as you heard from Simon Inkson earlier, policies are very likely to emerge to encourage the use of timber within the next term of the Welsh Assembly. As an example, in France, President Macron, Macron has stated that by 2022, excuse me, that's classic, uh, 2022, 50% of new public funded buildings must be based upon wood. Next slide, please. Incredibly, almost 50% of the UK's industrial carbon emissions are due to the production of cement and steel. As you can see from the pie chart there. So here's the question, which widely available industrial material can we use more of and help mitigate climate change at the same time? The answer, of course, is wood. You don't defeat climate change by using more concrete, more steel or more plastic. I would suggest too 
that wood will prove to be the wonder material of the 21st century, as Simon mentioned earlier. Next slide, please. But do you think of wood as a kind of old and rather boring material? Or beautiful, maybe, but not really relevant to modern society? And perhaps not even really an industry at all? Uh, in which case, I would invite you to think again. Stora Enzo is an 8 billion euro forest products company based in Finland. 80% of their revenue comes from products they did not make 10 years ago. I invite you to reflect on that and reflect upon what might be created from trees in the next 10 years. Next slide, please. The amazing thing about trees is that they grow well on land, not suited to efficient food production. One hectare of land provides enough grazing for one sheep or enough wood to build one house per year. In a climate emergency, what do we choose? Having said that, it's not really sheep or trees, just maybe not both in the same place. The UK is the second largest importer of wood in the world after China. And our current coniferous forest in Wales covers an area less than the size of Anglesey. So there is room for dramatic expansion to meet our consumption over the coming years. Next slide, please. Importantly, the Welsh wet and warm climate enables us to grow the kind of trees industry needs and quickly. Fast, gro fast growth helps to remove carbon faster and produce raw materials for industry more efficiently. All advanced timber construction materials, such as cross laminated timber to replace concrete, glue lamb to replace steel, and wood fibre insulation to replace plastic foams, are all produced from the kind of trees we, gr we grow in Wales. But these products are currently not produced anywhere in the UK, they're all imported. And as we drive towards decarbonisation, unless we proactively go out and manufacture these products, we will simply import more. We aim to change that. We also have a huge undersupplied market on the doorstep within England, of course. So next slide, please. This is my last slide. So to finish up, I'd just like to tell you about the Homegrown Homes project. This project delivered by us, but led by Powys County Council and funded through the EU and Welsh Government has successfully demonstrated the potential to build higher performance lower carbon homes from the Welsh offsite manufacturing base using homegrown timber. The social houses you can see in the picture are in Clambeda in North Wales. The homes are made from homegrown structural timber insulated with wood fibre. The cladding is homegrown larch and the windows are made from a coir, which is a chemically modified pine. To find out more about this activity, I invite you to visit the Homegrown Homes project page on the Wood Knowledge Wales website. That's it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Jacobari Alm, a tree. Oh, Hanochi, thank you so much. I wish I'd worn my lumberjack shirt this morning, as, as Anthony says, it's back in fashion, apparently. Uh, okay. The he only Mlan Ir Ola Osachuni will move swiftly on to the third showcase entitled Careers Wales and Working Wales How We Can Help You. It's a pre recorded message, I think about it saying, and it's with the stakeholder engagement manager, Sarah Winter. Good morning. I'm Sarah Winter from Careers Wales and I'm part of the Working Wales team. I'm here this morning to talk to you a little bit about how Careers Wales and Working Wales can help you if you're considering getting into the forestry sector or indeed any other industry sector. We've already heard this morning that the forestry sector is a really diverse industry with lots of different job roles. And here are some of the job roles you might be more familiar with and some of the more diverse roles you may never have considered. With the support of Careers Wales, we can help you consider these different job roles. Our teams of careers advisors and employability coaches work across the whole of Wales, and we can support customers of any age with under any circumstances. You might be in school considering getting into the forestry industry. You might be employed, and looking for a change of career direction, or you might be unemployed, and this might be the sector for you. 
We're based in secondary schools and careers offices across Wales, but at the moment we're delivering our service via digital means. This means we can contact you via the telephone or we can have a video call with you if you would prefer. Our employability support can provide advice on how to write a CV, how to apply for jobs, how to search for jobs and prepare you for the all important interview. We can signpost you to training or further learning to gain qualifications that you might need to enter the sector. And we can also signpost you to funding that may pay for those qualifications. At a careers advice and guidance interview, we'll really get you thinking about your future. We'll help you identify whether this job is right for you. We'll consider the skills that you might need to work in industry, skills you may already have, or skills you may need to develop and grow. We'll get you thinking about labour market information. What is it like to work in forestry? What does the future hold for the industry? How much will you earn? And what qualifications are employers really looking for? We'll talk to you about how to get those qualifications, the different training providers and the different routes into the industry. There are many different routes, qualifications and training that will allow you to gain a job within the forestry sector. You may decide that it's appropriate to go to college and undertake a qualification, for example, like a level two or three in countryside and environment. It might be that some job roles require a degree and for this you would need to go to university. You might be lucky enough to secure an apprenticeship and gain qualifications whilst you're working and earning at the same time with the support of both the employer and a training provider. As an adult, you might find it more appropriate to do short courses such as chainsaw tickets, first aid and forestry chainsaw. This might be a more appropriate route for you as it might fit around your current um, family requirements and also your current employment. On the Careers Wales website, careerswales.gov.wales, there's a whole array of information, but I've highlighted here the course search page, which will allow you to search those different courses, gain more information and have signposting opportunities to those training providers who can deliver those courses. As an adult, it's possible that you might be able to gain some funding for courses that you will undertake. Through the REACT programme, if you have been made unemployed since the 1st of January 2020, it's possible that you can secure up to £1,500 worth of vocational training funds to help for those tickets such as the chainsaw. It's also possible that you can claim up to £200 to reimburse additional costs like accommodation and travel. If an employer is to take you on if you're eligible, that employer can gain up to £3,000 worth to help towards your salary costs within the first year. This is big incentive for employers and whilst you're talking to employers and applying for jobs, it's worth mentioning that you're eligible for REACT if indeed you meet the criteria. If you're currently employed, it's possible that you could claim a personal learning account. Personal learning accounts are designed for people who are employed, who are living in Wales and earning under £26,000. It's to address skill shortages within different industries and help you progress within industry sectors and gain those qualifications. If you wish to have more information and that help and support from Careers Wales and the team at Working Wales, you can contact us on 0800 028 4844 or contact your college and school advisor directly. We can help you with that careers advice and guidance, but also help you with your REACT or your personal learning application. There's plenty of information on our websites, workingwales.gov.wales and careerswales.gov.wales. And I am going to be at the question and answer session later on this morning, along with my colleague Emma. So if you've got any questions you want to ask, please pop along to that session and we'll be happy to answer them for you. So thank you very much for listening to me this morning. Diolch and Vauer, thank you. So three, well, more than three valuable showcases there, and at least four, if not all seven, actually, will be on the panel for your questions later on this morning, uh, hopefully just before midday. OK, as I mentioned, all the showcases, biogs and the content for the Q&A, as well as photos, etc., are available on Eventbox. I'm hoping after seeing those showcases, 
you'll have some questions. They are coming in thick and fast. You wouldn't believe it, the, the amount of questions I'm having so far. Uh, they are going to be ready for the panelists later on. Keep on, keep on using the uh, Q&A, keep on using the chat by all means um, and ask your questions. Don't forget, today is all about the economy and the economic benefits of the National Forest. So if we can try and lean towards the economic side, that, that would be great. Okay. Now, I'm a troll. I'm said I'm coffee back now. Now, let's have a quick tea or coffee. Now, this is important. After the break, we'll be going into part two of the session, and it's your opportunity to have your say. So, yes, have a coffee, and then please go back to the lobby in Event Box, look for and go into breakout conversations, and there's sessions, Kursion and Gamai. Click onto the appropriate link. I think it's the third one down that says 1055. A little bit late, I know, but 10.55, and I think the word now will appear. And then click on the green box that will appear on the left-hand side that says click here to join the Zoom meeting. So go back to the lobby, break our conversations. Okay, the appropriate links, the third one down that says 10.55, and then a box will appear on the left saying uh, click here to join the Zoom meeting. And we'll reconvene here, if we may, please, in, well, we'll say 10 minutes. So it's now 5.2, so five past them, please. During the break, you'll be able to watch some more films that are in a loop in the lobby, go down to the bottom of the page. They're starting with a special film by Griffith uh, Jones, Custard Aware in People's Collection of Wales, and I'm sure there's a couple of other videos there as well. So let's give it 10 minutes. Don't forget any problems, let us know, and we'll see you back for the, the breakout conversation at, uh, well, we'll say five past. Okay, Joe. Yeah. Okay, I think we are all back. Yes, we are. Good. Okay, so we're going to finish off with our Q&A. Uh, we would ordinarily take a quick break, but we probably haven't got time, if you don't mind. We'll go straight into it uh, because we need to finish 12.30ish. Uh, so we might not get to all of your, your questions. I'm sure you'll understand. Okay, so um, if you, I know there's a field there already. Adam, if you can let me know what the questions are, but I do have already uh a few uh okay this is as i said this is the third the final part of the session um right we've got our panelists waiting i'm not quite sure how many we've got we've got one two three four five six seven my word we've got eight we've got eight panelists so uh, as i said we might not not get through uh, uh, most of these questions okay um first of all how can work be helped especially in during this COVID restriction time. We're in a terrible time at the moment. Is anything going on at the moment? Um, how can things be sort of um, developed, if you like? James, well, where, where are we at the moment, as we're considering, you know, the situation we're in? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, this year we had a number of demonstrator projects running, and a lot of them did involve working the community groups to sort of manage and, in, and plant trees. So the work has been going on recently, but it hasn't been to the same sort of level of community engagement as perhaps we would have hoped it would be, but we will get back to in due course. So we have Keep Whilst Tidy did recently plant some tiny forests for us, and we have got some other work going with NRW to enhance woodland. So there is some stuff going on, but as I say, not quite to the same level of involvement as we would normally no, would want. Not fair enough. You know, uh, we've, had, uh, so we've had some planting at some schools as well, and there has been a few school children involved, some of the key worker children involved, but again, not the, the large numbers we would have expected. Okay, yeah, that's that's understandable, obviously, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Adam, if you can hear me, if you can send me some some questions, please. I do have a few. Uh, Kirsten, uh, right, she's asking, have you been in touch with Woodland Trust's Tree Charter Group? Can anybody answer that? Gail, maybe, or um, they've been collating stories from people across Wales, uh, and obviously this is a big part of of the uh, the concept, if you like. I think that's to do. Sorry, that's to do with the people's collection point. I think I made this morning in the presentation. And yes, so yeah. I, I think I did ask Erica in the break, and I don't think we have yet, but we can. We can work with Woodland Trust on that certainly. Okay. Okay. That's 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 fine. Um, okay, we're having problems getting the the questions here. There you go. Uh, is the natural regeneration of woodland part of the strategy? Jill's asking two questions. First of all, is the natural regeneration of woodland part of the actual strategy? Who would like to go there? Gail? 
Well, I can't talk on behalf of the, the strategy because I'm here really for the circular economy and the green recovery side of things. But I certainly think that there are opportunities, whether they're hedgerows, whether they're um, unmanaged woodland, whether it's um, about change of land use to uh, enable more woodland to be planted and also about um, not just one size fits all so it doesn't have to be an entire conifer plantation you could also have a uh, broadleaf woodland at the edges of the conifers and forest gardens so I think we need to think creatively about all different types of woodland and all different types of uh, opportunities to manage our woodland better and uh, to grow more trees. Okay, I'm I'm trying to trying to um, give these questions a bit of everyone really. Uh, I don't want to come back to James or respect James too often. Uh, uh, where are we? Sean Rosson and Goid Medal softwoods in Wales. Is Wales suitable to grow and harvest softwoods? Anybody? I'm very happy to pick that up, uh, okay. Chris. Um, so essentially, yes, Wales is, is incredibly suitable. We've got a, a brilliant temperate climate. Um, we're seeing the second rotations of some of the uh, plantation, old plantation forestry now moving into uh, newer styles of management, which means they're becoming mixed woodlands, but they've still got a, a strong coniferous element. And that's producing really high quality timber. It's going off to be graded uh, to something called a C16 plus grade, um, which is perfect it's absolutely suitable for building houses um so yeah wales really does grow brilliant softwoods right okay excellent uh, that's, okay um maybe then gary uh we've got okay well this this might be a little bit of a well not might be it can be a little bit of a controversial maybe a sensitive one let's put it that way uh, how do you envisage woodland conservation and timber production working collaboratively within local areas, working together, basically. Is that I mean, going to be difficult? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, the, 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 the question is, do you try and do it all in the same place? So do you try and max out biodiversity, productivity, amenity, all in the same forest? Or do you, um, you know, focus on different things in different places? And I, and I think we should focus on different things in different places, which doesn't mean that productive forestry has no biodiversity and no amenity value. But you can't have it all in all cases, I think is my Okay. I, I, I don't know if you can answer this question again from Jill. It's a, quite a specific one. Do building regulation requirements come from the UK or the Welsh government? Uh, building regs is set in uh, Welsh by Welsh government. Um, so uh, we have um, the building regs have devolved powers. So um, okay. yes. I, well, let's, we're talking about devolving. Um, Jan Marco, uh, are you with us? Can you hear us, sir? I certainly can. There we are. We heard from you earlier on. Thank you for that. Thanks for your presentation. Um, can you give us uh, an idea, you know, where, where we are now, as it were, with regards to the, the whole concept? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry I couldn't join you for, 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 for all of this, but I hope you had a good um, a, a good discussion. Um, so I, I think, I mean, first and foremost, I think this is a really exciting, exciting project. And um, I mean, you will all know because you will have heard from from the first minister and from and, and from the minister that this is very much a priority for for this Welsh for this Welsh government. Um, we've been working very hard, as you would have heard from James and others, over the last um, eighteen months or so to get the project going. Um, the the demonstrators have been a key part of this, really, to test delivery mechanisms, to test funding mechanisms. Um, the engagement with stakeholders, with uh, with Anthony, with Gary, with with many others, is a is a key part of this. Um, so we're at that stage now, really, of of looking forward to what the what the subsequent phase of the program is. And I think I think that engagement piece, that um, broadening out of the demonstrators, um, that increasing the number of woodlands that are part of the national forest, so that are you know that meet the criteria. Uh, to be designated um, as part of the national forest. That's 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 the exciting sort of set of of next steps. So this um, this series of seminars comes at a comes at a really important important point in in, yeah, in, in, that, in yeah. that progress. Okay, and, and um, thank you. We we've talked quite a bit of, about education as well. Uh, maybe not so much today, but Sarah and Emma, maybe you're the ones maybe to address this question. 
should this project, it's by Graham, should this project be built into school curricula alongside teaching about nature and biodiversity? I'm yeah, I'm happy to I'm happy to answer that one. And uh, yes, I think I think it should be. Um, I, I, I was just thinking as uh, other presenters were talking about um, maybe skill sh skill shortages in the in the industry and encouraging school children to really think of this as a sector, you know, early on in the piece. And I know Careers Wales work quite closely with uh, with secondary school pupils and we're we're starting to work with primary school pupils now as well, just broadening their horizons in terms of what employment opportunities are out there. So the sooner we can weave it into the uh, curriculum, the better. Yes, indeed. OK, Emma, would you like to answer that and get you in? Oh, there we go. If I, if I unmute. Yes, absolutely. You know, in terms of things like, you know, the way that we work with organisations like yourselves to, to offer work placements and things like that. I mean, I work in the post 16, post uh, education sector as well. So looking at people that are looking to, to kind of retrain as well, but then offering that in schools as well with those kind of work placements that we can blend that in so that when people are going on their work experience at school and things, they are getting exposed to this sector and those sorts of jobs. That'd be great, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Chris, Chris can I just add, we've, we've got a team of uh, business engagement advisors who work really closely with the secondary schools, looking to engage employers um, with with those schools to to get the message directly to the to the school pupils on you know the the, the different industry sectors. So I think you know that would be a good opportunity to explore that and uh, introduce our bees to some of our colleagues on the on the call today. Oh, excellent, good, okay, um, okay. This Chris, a, could I um, could I say something? Very quickly, if you may, Gail, I'm just keeping very conscious of the time here. We're going to be got another session at one o'clock, but keep going. Go on. In our group, uh, we talked uh, in the breakout group about the importance for. Um, people who are not uh, just a school children, but who are adults as well, involved jobs to do with establishing, cultivating, protecting, management, harvesting, marketing, forest, um, it, the, and the Institute of Chartered Foresters and other professional bodies are there also to help uh, with in terms of skills and, and professional needs uh, for adults as well as children. Okay, good. Thank you, Gail. Uh, quick, uh, this is a question for James. Uh, forgive me, I think it's Al Al Alana, Alaini. Um, James, how do you, I think it was part of your presentation, how do you define resilient? Fossil pollen data show that some tree species that are not native to Wales, we're here during the Mesolithic, uh, when warmer, drier summers probably prevail, should the definition of native take into account resilience? to future climate trends? Yeah, something I picked up on my presentation this morning, one of our key outcomes is around good, you know, a lot more good quality, well-managed, resilient woodlands. So definitely as we go forward, if we want the national forest to be a long-term asset to Wales, we need to think about how we plant trees that are resilient to future climate change, as well as things like pests and diseases as well. So it's something that quite a lot of people are doing work on at the moment in government and outside government around, you know, what trees will we be planting in the future? So it's a, good, it's a really good question, something we need to come back to. Okay. In due course, okay. and probably be part of consultation, probably be touched on the consultation later in the year as well. That's great. Thank you, James. Uh, yes, uh, this obviously has been recorded, so the, the, I'm presuming that the chat and the Q&A has all been recorded. So I'm keeping an eye on the time. We've got another couple of questions, maybe. Um, I have to bring this up, actually, because we did talk about uh, the possibility of this. By understanding how forests grow and sustain themselves without human intervention, now I know some people have got their ideas about this, without human intervention, we can learn from nature, copy the systems, the patterns to model our own forest. One, and it sounds idyllic, one filled with trees and plants to produce food that we can eat. Is that, with all respect to the lady, is that realistic? Is that part of the strategy? Is that something we're all thinking about? Uh, well, let's, well, Jan Marco, what about you? Is that something you can address? Look, it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting point. I mean, we, we have we have to be sanguine about the fact that um, what we've got is a natural environment of which people are part of. So I think a lot of what we need to do is think about that interaction between people, the natural environment, how we how we maximise the, the benefits. Um, and some of that will be about, you know, will be about clearly learning and using the science that is out there um, about how 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 the environment develops um, um, uh, in, in in different situations. But I, I think, you know, for me, 
this is a classic example of where environmental policy is very much um, uh, very much embedded in communities, in people, in, in society. It's about it's about trees, it's about woodland, and it's about people. So I think we need to we need to think about all those those aspects together. As far as I'm I'm concerned. Okay. Okay. Um, if we look at the UK Public Opinion and Forestry Survey, um, the Welsh results show that already foraging is something that quite a number of people in Wales are doing, whether it's for mushrooms or berries or for other uh, non-timber forest products that they can extract uh, as long as it's within regulations from forests. So there's plenty of opportunity for as well as foraging and um, things Okay, good. Thank you, Kelly. You broke up towards the end there, but uh, thank you, Kelly, for that for that um, question and comments. Uh, last one, then, if we may, um, from Heather. I'm very keen on Welsh timber use. Now that I know, let's let's go to uh, either Gary or Anthony. Maybe I'm very keen on Welsh timber use in housing, but have some concerns. How long does wood frame social housing last before needing major repairs? Gary. Can I come back on that one? Yeah. Um, unless it's jerry built and contravenes all the building regulations, it should last forever. The real, the real problem is that we're not building to the, other than through exemplar schemes that the Welsh Government have funded, we're not building to the standard that would meet our needs by 2050 to be carbon neutral. So we need higher performance buildings, but wood kept dry will last forever. So, um, there's absolutely no reason that 85% okay. uh, of houses in Scotland are made from timber frame. And the, the, the same the same lady, uh, Gary or Anthony, and we'll finish with this if we may. Is it right then that, forgive me, is that glue lambs? Glue lambs? Glue lambs. Glue lambs. Is it right then the glue lambs, if sent to landfill, produce methane and actually end up causing more emissions than steel beams? Well, like let's on. finish off with Anthony. Let's finish off uh, with Anthony. Yeah, no. I think. This is where we need to look at things like circular economy. Um, you know, this is the real opportunity that uh, timber provides us. This is a high value product. So the likelihood of glue lamb actually going off to landfill should be, should be non-existent. It should be so unlikely. Um, that, that product has another use. So timber can just be recycled and where we can, uh, where we can repurpose it uh, turn it into other products and then put it back into future housing. Uh, absolutely, that's what we'll be, we will be doing, we'll be looking to do as an industry. Right. Uh, forgive me, what is a glue lamp? It's uh, multiple layers of timber glued together to produce a uh, really high grade structural quality timber. Wow, learning new things, fantastic. Hey, thank you so much. We have reached, oh, was it 20 past 12? Perfect timing. So thank you again to all our panelists. Thank you to um, the contributors. Thank you for asking those questions. Uh, absolutely fantastic. I've learned a lot. So we've reached the, the end of the session as well. Let me quickly remind you of the other sessions we have for you this afternoon. We've got one at one o'clock in, in just over half an hour. We'll be focusing on the social and communities benefits of the National Forest. And tomorrow morning uh, will be trees for the environment in the morning and then trees by the economy in the afternoon again if you're unsure of the times etc just go to the event box page there's all kinds of information there and you can register uh, either in welsh or english of course if you haven't already done so now before you go can you in uh i'm please stay with us for a couple of more minutes we're going to play you a couple of very short videos really nice videos actually um, with Yolo, Yolo williams you all know Yolo as a presenter and an activist so we'll have one in welsh first and then one in English before coming back to say goodbye. Thank you. Ano rubeth hidolis am goedwig. Fel ien gyda natur maen nhw'n dda i'r ennaid. Da ni ddim yn teimlo yn unig nag ar goll, ond yn gysylltiedig. Yn gysylltiedig gan gwreiddiau Celtaidd a chwedlau o'r mabinogi. Mae coedwigoedd yn cyfoethogi ein bywydau mewn cymaint o ffyrdd. Bydd coedwi genedlaethol Cymru yn cysylltu ein coetiroedd hynafol a newydd yn dod â diwylliant ein gorffennol a'n presennol i fywyd i ddathlu Cymru fel gwlad wedi ei chyfoethogi gan ein coetiroedd. Dim planu coedwi gyda'r cynllun, ond planu syniad a'i wylio'n tyfu dros genedlaethau. Mae o 
Syniad fydd yn siapio ein gwytnwch fel cenedl yn y dyfodol, yn creu cryfder drwy gydbwysedd ac yn dylanwadu ein hamgylchedd, ein cynefin a'n bywydau, yn ddiwylliannol, yn economaidd ac yn gynaliadwy. Yn cynhyrchu ffyniant masnachol trwy greu ymwelwyr, diwydiant a swyddi. Byddwn yn adfer, gwella a chreu coetiroedd a chynefinoedd mewn ffordd gysylltiedig ar hyd a lled Cymru. Wrth gymryd yr agwedd y goeden iawn yn y lle iawn, ochr yn ochr a safonau a chanllawiau coedwigaeth y deyrna synedig, bydd ein coedwig genedlaethol yn sefydlu tirweddau a chynefinoedd cryf, cynaliadwy, wedi gwreiddio'n gadarn i ymddiffyn ein gwlad mewn nifer a ffyrdd o effeithiau newid yr hinsawdd i lifogydd. Mae ein coedwig genedlaethol yn ymwneud â mwy na choed yn unig. Mae'n ymwneud â chwarae rhan mewn tyfu a rhannu Cymru mewn dyfodol sy'n ddiw ac yn ffynu am genedlaethau i ddod. Eich coedwig genedlaethol chi ydy hon. Byddwch yn rhan o honi. There's something magical about forests. At one with nature, they're good for our soul. We feel not alone, not lost, but connected. Connected to our Celtic past and tales from the Mabinogion. Forests enrich our lives in so many ways. The National Forest for Wales will connect our ancient and the woodlands, bringing our past and present culture to life, celebrating Wales as a land enriched by our woodlands. The plan isn't simply to plant a forest, it's to plant an idea and watch it grow for generations. It's an idea that will shape our future resilience as a nation, creating strength through balance and influencing our environment, our habitats and our lives, culturally, economically and sustainably. It will generate commercial prosperity by creating visitors, industry and jobs. We will restore, enhance and create woodlands and habitats in a connected way across the length and breadth of Wales. Taking a right tree, right place approach alongside UK forestry standards and guidelines, our national forest will establish strong, sustainable landscapes and habitats, firmly rooted to protect our country in a number of ways from climate change effects to flooding. Our national forest is about more than just trees. It's about playing a part in growing and sharing a future Wales that's alive and thriving for generations to come. This is your national forest. Be part of it. Bet Jörg Jolo. I know Jolo for many, many years, and I know he's very, very passionate about this. So it's fantastic. Jörg Galo and Thanks to everyone who's taken part today. Um, hopefully, or oh, thank you, Gary, for answering a couple of questions on the chat button. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hopefully, we'll see you at the session this afternoon at one o'clock. And there's one tomorrow. There's two tomorrow. The first one tomorrow starts at 10 with Trees for the Environment. Uh, thank you again. I'm Gavrani. Enjoy the rest of the day. We might see you again. You never know in uh, the sessions we've got left. But for now, from me, thank you.